Hello, my name is Andreas Heinrich and I am the director of the Center for Quantum Nanoscience here in Seoul, South Korea. We are located on the campus of Iwa Women's University and today I have the special honor to introduce a tutorial to you um, where we want to explain ESR STM, electron spin resonance together with scanning tunneling microscopy. Now let's take a look at the image here. This is the Center for Quantum Nanoscience. So let's start by walking inside. This is a picture taken right before the coronavirus outbreak of all our participants in the Center for Quantum Nanoscience, together with a few visitors. And you will see many of those people, researchers in this team, presenting aspects of ESR STM to you in the following videos. Now this first video is supposed to be a general introduction. And so I will walk you through what is ESR STM and why do you want to care about using ESR STM in the future. Now, we believe that you, the viewer, are actually an expert in scanning tunneling microscopy, but you might not know about ESR STM. And so our focus is to take you on a journey to explain some of the difficulties, but also some of the opportunities of ESR STM to you. Okay. So we make this tutorial because ESR STM is just starting to become a technique that is, that is used in a few groups around the world. We are here in Asia, we have some groups in the United States of America and also in Europe. So we are starting to grow the community, but we believe that we would like to have many more people using ESR STM in the future. Why do we want this? Because there are many challenges that we need to tackle together to make ESR STM become a worldwide recognized powerful tool. Now the difficulty of course that we all face right now is that we can't do this in person because of the coronavirus pandemic. And so we have to talk to you through this YouTube video channel. So please follow us in the following videos where we will describe many of the details to you um, step by step. Let's start with a brief history of ESR STM. The idea of ESR STM was born at a winter conference in 2008 at the Aspen Center for Physics in the United States. I was attending this conference and I made a very good friend there, Arjang Ardevan from Oxford University in the United Kingdom. He is an expert in electron spin resonance. I'm maybe an expert in scanning tunneling microscopy. And so we thought hard and long about how can we combine these two techniques together to make ESR STM a possibility. The basic idea of course is very simple. In the scanning tunneling microscope, we can look at individual atoms. We can see the spin properties of a single atom, but with a certain energy resolution. On the other hand, we have electron spin resonance shown here as the example taken by Fabio Donati's group here in our center for a particular spin in diamond. ESR has a much, much higher energy resolution than STM but it requires billions of spins that all have to be identical to achieve that high resolution and to get enough signal. And so can we make something where we have at the same time a single spin, but with the energy resolution of electron spin resonance? This is the goal of ESR STM. So the idea is actually very simple. Can we combine these two together and make something that is better than each one individually? Now, why is this challenging? This is challenging because we need to combine the high frequency performance of ESR, which is usually done in the tens of gigahertz range, together with low temperature STM, uh, which doesn't usually operate in this high frequency regime. But we need to do this all by measuring individual spins. And so the state of the art in 2008 was nowhere near the capability that we could just implement ESR STM at that time. Spin polarized STM was available, but was limited to atoms and, and structures on metal surfaces, where we did not think that we could achieve ESR STM. We will get to this in a moment. Also, the time resolution of STM was very much limited at that point to approximately one millisecond. And one millisecond, while that sounds fast, 
is very, very slow on the time scale that we need for ESR STM. And so fortunately in 2010, two major advances were made that brought us closer to ESR STM. The first one was simply to import this power of spin polarized STM also to the quantum spins on surfaces. And the second one was to come up with an idea and a technique to vastly improve the time resolution of STM from the range of about one millisecond to one nanosecond of one million times faster. A big step towards achieving the fast time resolution we need for ESR STM. Okay, so this allows us now to come up with the main ingredients we need for ESR STM. We need quantum spins with long lifetimes, long spin lifetimes. We need to have spin polarized tunneling available so that we can measure the spin state of an individual quantum spin. And these two are very closely related to each other. We need to be able to measure the spin state before it relaxes back to the ground state. And finally, and, and somehow most difficultly, we need to have a method to coherently drive these spins. This is the new aspect that we need to introduce for ESR STM. And this has two main aspects. One, we need the technology, the, the technical aspect. How do we get gigahertz frequencies into a low temperature STM? This is more uh, just a technical question. But then you also need a method question here. And the method problem is that ESR, traditional ESR, uses time-dependent magnetic fields. And time-dependent magnetic fields are very difficult to create in a low temperature STM. We still don't know how to do this. So we had to come up with a conceptually new idea how to overcome this problem, and I'll explain that to you in a moment. First, let's look at spins with long lifetime. We've done work for about 15 years about spins on surfaces, so we know a very large number of, of, of components that we might need. For example, we can use a spin with a large magnetic anisotropy as shown here. This spin of a spin magnitude of two has a large easy axis magnetic anisotropy and you can see that there are two states. Here, the state zero, the ground state, and a state one, a higher energy state. Those can be used as the two states that we want to coherently manipulate. And you can see, of course, that we have the advantage that we have an energy barrier between state one and state zero. And so state one is relatively long lived. The spin lifetime is long, relatively easy to measure with the time resolution that we have nowadays in STM. The problem of course here is that we have a non-traditional ESR system here. A traditional ESR system is always a spin one half type system. And in a spin one half type system, we do not have any magnetic anisotropy and therefore, the spin relaxations are also correspondingly fast. And so we need to bridge between this fast spin relaxation that we expect in traditional ESR systems with these more, uh, more uh, or easier for us, STM people systems with magnetic anisotropy. We can do this all by putting the spins on a thin insulating film, such as shown here, magnesium oxide, our favorite material to do ESR STM. The most important aspect that we need to memorize, that you need to take away from this video, is that we want to use very fast, time-dependent electric fields to drive electron spin resonance in the STM. This is because an electric field is relatively easy to achieve between the tip and the sample, whereas creating a magnetic field of equal strength is very difficult and we don't, still don't know how we could do this, even in concept. So how can we use an electric field to drive ESR. And this is where my friend Arjan is one of the world experts in utilizing electric field in spin resonance. He really came up with the key ideas here. This is the only formula I'm gonna show you in this video, don't freak out. Um, this is a spin Hamiltonian for a spin of magnitude two. And I just want to point out that we have in the first two terms, we have the Zeeman energy, which is always present for all spins. But if we have a higher spin, such as a spin of two, we also have magnetic anisotropy parameters. And in particular, we have this term back here, which reads S plus to the four plus S minus to the four. And for those of you knowing quantum mechanics, you can see that with this term, I can make transitions of delta M equals plus minus four 
which are perfectly suited for this, for this um, iron spin that I showed you before. So the key trick to realize is that these parameters in the spin Hamiltonian stem from electric fields in the environment. And if I can make these electric field time dependent, then these parameters will also be time dependent. And if they are time dependent, then they then can be used to drive ESR transitions. So again, the key is we use electric fields in the STM, which can be relatively strong. We use these electric fields to modulate the spin Hamiltonian parameters. And in principle, all spin Hamiltonian parameters will be dependent on this electric field. And you have to find the right symmetry and the right parameters to match the, the, your spin on the surface. Okay, so this is all we need to do. We connect a high frequency source called a local oscillator in electron spin resonance to our STM via a special type of wiring, a so-called semi-rigid coaxial cable. We will show you this in one of our tutorials, how to do this in practice. And then we attach this to the tip and we add the DC bias voltage to this fast time dependent bias voltage via a bias T. Main ingredient, relatively simple. Okay, so ESR or STM was born in 2015, just before I started the Center for Quantum Nanoscience here in Seoul, when I was still uh, in the IBM Research Center in the United States. We first found this for a spin two, this iron atom on MGO, where we have a transition of delta M equals plus minus four between the state zero and the state one. And remember from the previous slide, this is exactly the parameter that we can tune in the spin Hamiltonian to make an ESR transition between these two states. Now here's some data taken by our, by, by Taeyang's group here in, in, uh, in, in QNS, uh, showing the iron atom on MGO. What you can see here is the first ESR spectrum of this tutorial we have on the x-axis here the frequency that we apply. This is the frequency of the electric field between tip and sample. And on the y-axis, we have the tunnel current or the change in the tunnel current as we measure the tunnel current as a function of frequency. And what you can see is we have a single peak here at a frequency of about 12 gigahertz when we apply this particular magnetic field. And you can see that as we slightly change the magnetic field, the ESR frequency increases. Now, looking at these values of magnetic field, you can see that we change the magnitude by something like 10 millitesla, whereas in the previous STM um, spin excitation, I showed you changes of one tesla. So we are much more sensitive to the magnetic field with ESR STM than we are in the traditional STM methods. So there you go. Here you have ESR STM and the goal of the following tutorials is to help you create such a spectrum, measure such a spectrum in your own machine. Now, as you can see, the ESR frequency goes up with increasing magnetic field as you would expect for the Zeeman energy. Okay, the power of ESR STM lies in two parts. And this is the end of my tutorial. First, you can see that we have a very sharp line. If we are careful, if we go to small tunnel currents, you can see we have a line that is only a few megahertz wide. Now, what is a few megahertz for you? STM people, you might not live in megahertz. So let me put this in the milli electron volts to which you are used to. One milli electron volt equals 242 gigahertz. Here you have a line width that is only a few megahertz. And so this corresponds to an energy of only 15 nano electron volts. This is thousands of times better than any normal STM resolution. And this is of course true for all spin resonance. A spin resonance is never limited to the temperature. A spin resonance is limited to the quantum coherence time T2 and to some other parameters, but it does not necessarily depend directly on the temperature. So you can get much, much better energy resolution by utilizing a spin resonance. The second point I want to, want to make here is that having such quantum coherence in the STM enables us to get to this bullseye here of utilizing STM for quantum coherent functionality in quantum nanoscience. And this is really where I believe the future of our STM work lies. We want to control spins to use them for quantum sensing and possibly also for quantum computing. So I hope that I was able to show you how you can take the necessary steps or at least begin to show you the necessary steps 
to take your low temperature STM towards electron spin resonance. If you're interested in more, we have a large amount of material available on our YouTube channel, but also on Instagram, Facebook, and other channels. And please follow the rest of our tutorials for more in-depth information about many aspects of ESR STM. And please feel free to contact me at this email address. With this, I invite you to enjoy the rest of our videos in this tutorial and please be an active participant in the discussions that we hope to have that stem from these videos. Thank you very much.